Hey guys, welcome back to another week of Mac Outdoors with Mia and Leah. The two of us are here today and we're going to talk to you all about 3D archery. Hey, hey everybody, welcome to the Mac Outdoors podcast where a dynamic mother-daughter duo share their adventures, tips, and advice. I am Mia and I'll be accompanied by the one and only daughter, Leah. It is time to get to outdoors, hunt, shoot, and spend time with family and friends. Let's get this show on the road. Hey everybody, this last week we hope that you had a very happy Easter and maybe you got to spend it with family and friends. Hopefully you didn't have to work. We every year put on a big giant Easter egg hunt and we have a ton of kids out here and they hunt about a thousand Easter eggs and then after that we put on an archery shoot which was created by Leah because once she got big and wasn't into hunting eggs or actually she's kind of too old to hunt eggs but she started this archery shoot and it's turned out pretty good huh Leah? Yeah it's been a lot of fun to learn from it and make new ideas every year. Yeah so what do you think like the first year how many targets do we have and what did you think about the shoot like the layout and everything how has it evolved? Well we haven't been doing it too long and the first year we had Um, maybe 15 targets and the layout was pretty simple. We had just had like three at each station and everyone shot and they were relatively easy, close shots and it was fun. Of course, it's always fun to shoot with your friends out there. This year, I developed it a little more and I made it a little more challenging which I got a few comments from people saying it was a little too challenging and some people wish that it was a little more challenging. (laughs) So there were a lot of different input to it. Yeah. So part of what Leah did to make it more challenging is she used the trees and stumps and bushes. So the shots, some of them you had to kneel down or I even saw one guy had to sit down because of how big he was. He had to sit down to shoot at the target. And I also had feedback that was really good. And some people were like, oh my gosh, because not all of the our friends and family shoot all the time. Actually, we had some people who was our very first time. And so there's all skill levels. And we have a group of youngsters who we have loner bows. We use some of our training bows with them and we take them out. They are lucky because they can scoot closer to the targets than <laughs> Leah, than the Leah's setup. So Leah, what was the longest shot you think you guys had this year? I made a bonus shot that was at our elk target and it was about 80 yards which isn't Whoa. too far, but isn't too close either. Yeah, and were there obstacles in front of that, or was it kind of straight away? It was a straight away, and part of the elk was behind a tree, so it kind of messed you up as to where the kill zone may be, but it was a clear shot. No other obstacles in the way of that. And so that leads me to something, a tip for people if they haven't shot 3D before, is shadows and like tunnel type bushes. Leah learned this when she shot in Pennsylvania because out west a lot of the terrain is fairly open, not not too overgrown. But in Pennsylvania, it was kind of like tunnel-ish the way the trees grew, right? And the shadows play with your vision as far as ranging items don't they yeah and I made one of those this year at our course and it did get me for sure (laughs) (laughs) still still trying to get over that (laughs) really (laughs) so did you miss a target or two or did you hit all of them how'd that work I missed one target and that one was Basically a thread the needle shot, which that one should have been a bonus because it was much harder than the far shot. But it was a coyote at about 45 yards uphill and you had to shoot from behind a tree through a hole of two other trees. And there is a branch just in the way. So if you were a touch high, you would hit that branch. So... I did miss that one, but... Yeah, and that one, the little kids that I was with, they were all nine and under, all of those 
kids, and um, they were kindergartners through third grade. But even them, as they scooted closer, there was a little tiny pine tree that's growing toward the left of the target and one toward the right, how she said, threading the needle. And even those little kids had a little hard time. They were only at about 10 feet or 12 feet away from that coyote. And one poor little boy, all of his arrows kept hitting that little, just the pine needles of the tree. (laughs) So (laughs) it definitely played a challenge for everybody, young and old. (laughs) Yeah, we had about all oh, 12 shooters this year and only two people hit it. So Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe that one was a little too hard. <laughs> Any tips for people who haven't shot 3D archery yet? I think the biggest thing is don't let it get in your head. I know the hardest thing for me is learning yardages. I think you should definitely practice before you go out and do a 3D shoot. At least shoot before you get there, even if that's all the time you have. But just to remind yourself yardages. And I know most bow shoots don't make anything too crazy far. I know actually there's been a couple that I've seen that have had 100-yard shots. Um, But like you said, no obstacles in front of them. And it's a bonus, like you're saying. But as she said, practice yardages, and the best way to learn yardages is to do it. Um, when you're practicing, you can use a rangefinder, but when you go to the 3D shoots, you're not allowed to use a rangefinder. So you really have to get that down and learn. I have a difficult time estimating ranges, so it's something that over the years, it's you kind of learn that to get an, get an eye for it, right? Yeah. And so, as I said, no rangefinders. What kind of gear are you allowed to take on a 3D shoot? You're allowed to take binos, which I highly recommend you take because a lot of 3D targets have the kill zone in sometimes very strange places. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time you think it's right there when really it's back like six inches where you thought it was from. So, Or like our shoot, we have a couple of dinosaurs and who knows where the kill zone is in a dinosaur, right? Like, I mean, an elk, you kind of have an idea or a deer, but you, so the binoculars definitely help for that. I know one of the little boys that we were with kept thinking he hit the dinosaur in the kill zone and it wasn't, he was hitting in a totally wrong place. So <laughs> the binos are a really good tip. Always bring spare arrows, even if there are easy targets. I know at a Y head competition one year, it was an easy shot and I uh, missed the pin that I was supposed to have it on and right when I shot I knew it was the wrong pin and lost an arrow on that one so it's always good to bring at least one or two extra arrows to a shoot. I know some people here went out with nine arrows and they only came back with five Five. arrows Right. So it depends on the bow shoe, but it's always good to have spares. Yeah, and it's good, like, that person actually hadn't practiced, so that's another reason to practice because arrows can be pretty expensive, and we'll spend some time out here searching for arrows so we can get them back to their owners if we find them in one piece and such, for, you know. But another thing is a quiver, whether it's a quiver that's on your bow or one you wear around your waist. I know one little boy brought his quiver, and it's a carry-around one, which made it difficult for him because he was carrying it a lot and he got tired. So a quiver is a good idea as well. What about arrow wax or soap? A great thing to put on before you shoot is scorpion venom, which helps your arrow come out of the target easier. And I'm so thankful to have that. And especially if there's people pulling heavier poundages they'll go deeper in the target and right those ones are awful to get out so if you put that on before you shoot you're gonna thank yourself later right and we're not sponsored by scorpion venom actually our bow tech at our local archery shop gave it to leah to try out and we uh, just love it because some targets actually are more dense than others. And so some of them, as she said, if she's pulling, you know, 55 pounds and it hits, some of them are really tough to get out, but that scorpion venom makes it really easy. So that's a good thing to put on your arrows, as she said. And of course, no broadheads at the shoot. What else? What other tips do you have? 
I think it's really good too to bring water. I brought one yesterday and I was so thankful because it was pretty hot out there and I know my mom would say sunscreen, but I know I don't always put that on, but <laughs> I guess I should listen to her after I get sunburns from shoots. You'll appreciate me later when you get older <laughs> if you actually wear it. <laughs> but actually, Hank has a bright red sunburn today. He got sunburned pretty good. <laughs> so maybe he's the one I should have been telling instead of her. <laughs> And so when you're shooting 3D, Leah, how is it scored? How do you score the points? And I actually scored the little kids differently than a traditional shoot. But how do you score a regular shoot for the grown-ups or big kids? Many shoots do it a lot of different ways. But at our shoot, I do the center ring is 10. The ring around that is 8. Some targets have another ring around that, and that's five. And then anywhere on the foam is two points. And obviously, if you miss, it's a zero. Yeah. And so that's something, as you said, different shoots score those differently. So you always have to listen to the instructions before the shoot so you know how to score. And for the little kids, um, a lot of them were shooting little long bows, just plastic bows with blunt field tips. So they didn't stick into the targets very well. I was giving them them two points if they hit the target and then I scored the rape the kill zone and the circle according to Leah's rules but um, some of those poor little kids you know they I think one little boy his arrow would only stick in the target twice and he would have had a lot of tens if his arrows would stick so he's he's in a practice more for next year (laughs) (laughs) so that's something that as I said I kind of adjusted the rules for little kids because part of our Easter hunt and part of the the Easter shoot is for the kids and to encourage them. We want them to get into archery and have fun. And it was really fun for them to get a score, you know, by hitting the target instead of just shooting it in the trees and spending all day looking for arrows. Those little kids really focused and they did so good. I know one little girl, she got second place and it was her first time shooting a bow. She borrowed one of ours and I uh, taught her how to shoot that morning and practiced with her and she actually won a little bow so she got to take that home and she was so excited yeah that's awesome it's so fun to see him so excited well we hope everyone had an awesome easter and share with us any of your archery shoot stories any crazy or funny things happen to you or even some ideas for next year's shoot where I can have new target setup ideas. Yeah, and that's a good idea because what we're hoping, and we're going to figure out a way to get Leah home from college for Easter, because as I mentioned in episode one, we started our podcast because Leah's going to be going away to college in the fall, and so next Easter, she's going to have to take the weekend, or if it's close to their Easter break, she'll have to come, and so she'll probably need some tips on fun setups for the archery course yes and you can share all your ideas with me on any of my social media outlets on facebook leah leggett and instagram and twitter is leah underscore huntress and you can also share those with my mom on her facebook mia anstein or her instagram and twitter which is also mia anstein we would love to hear your ideas and stories. Yep, share your stories. And you can also email us, mia at macoutdoors.com, or you can send us snail mail at macoutdoors, and the address is P.O. Box 5504, Pagosa Springs, Colorado, 81147. And we look forward to hearing from you guys. We'll be chatting with you next week. Thanks for tuning in.